So let's make it uh, our exclusive photographers on Linux club. Okay, let's, let's start. Um, first of all, the reason why I'm here. The main reason why I'm here is because I'm a very bad photographer. So I rely heavily on uh, software and especially open source software to make my crappy shorts uh, and turn them into something usable. So that's why I'm here because I use exclusively open source software to uh, process and organize my photos. As you probably know, uh, most uh, mainstream Linux distribution ship with uh, photography, uh, uh, photo management software. But um, most of these uh, applications are aimed at uh, amateur uh, and casual photographers. But uh, besides applications like F-Spot, and uh, let me get, get close to you, and um, uh, Shotwell, for example, there are a few high quality uh, uh, powerful applications that allows you to, to manage and uh, process photos if you are a serious photographer. So and in my talk I'm going to talk about these handy open source tools and uh, I'll try to show how you can turn your Linux machine into a, a darkroom for processing and organizing your photos. But before I get uh, to that, uh, there are a couple of points I would like to make. And first of all, almost everything I'm going to cover in my talk um, reflects my personal and uh, idiosyncratic way of, of uh, working with photos. So I would like to make it more of a dialogue than a monologue and hear your ideas and input on how to improve and, uh, and uh, workflow, photographic workflow on Linux uh, and, uh, and, uh, and optimize it. Second of all, um, even though I'm not a professional photographer, I, I do shoot in RAW. So most of my uh, photographic workflow uh, is built around uh, processing and organizing RAW files. How many of you shoot in RAW? Nice. And how many of you know what RAW actually is? Good. Uh, well, in short, RAW is, is well, as the name suggests, it's raw data captured by, by the camera sensor. So uh, it gives you more flexibility when it comes for, to, to, to getting more out of your shorts. In my talk, I'll focus on Digicam, and I'll talk briefly about Darktable and PVGo. So why Digicam? For a lot of number of reasons. Uh, thanks to Libro uh, processing decoding library, uh, Digicam supports a wide range of raw formats, um, including uh, usual suspects like NEF, uh, Nikon's, Nikon's uh, raw format, uh, SR2, uh, Canon's uh, raw format, uh, and, and so on. Uh, currently, Digicam supports over 400 um, raw formats uh, or cameras that shoot in raw. And uh, the developers are pretty good at adding new, c new camera models almost as soon as they hit uh, the market. Digicam also offers several ways of uh, viewing photos. Uh, you can view your photos as, as um, conventional albums. You can view them by tags or by date. You can view them at a timeline. And uh, you can even view them uh, on the map, uh, provided that your photos has been uh, uh, tagged uh, properly. Uh, speaking of geotagging, uh, Digicam offers a separate interface for working with uh, geographical date data. Uh, you can use it to, to geotag your photos and do some other clever stuff like uh, uh, Geocorrelating. Do you know what geocorrelating is? No. Uh, it's a very simple pro process. If you have a GPS tracker or 
for example, an Android phone with, uh, with a GPS tracking software app on it, you can rec uh, record your uh, location or your route in GPX format. And while doing so, you can take pictures. And then you can use Digicam to geocorrelate, basically extract geographical uh, data from the GPS and GPX track and save it in the photos. So you can view them on the map. Uh, Digicam also sports a very interesting feature called uh, reverse geocoding. So if you have pictures, for example, say taken with your Android phone, that are already uh, geotagged, you can use Digicam to turn this geographical data into a human readable format. For example, instead of uh, latitude or longitude, you will get street, city, country, and so on information. And you can view them in, the, in, in, in uh, Dig Digicam. Uh, Digicam offers a wide range of tools that can help you to keep tabs on your photo. Obviously, you can uh, use uh, uh, Digicam to tag and rate your photos. And uh, in addition to that, Digicam supports two clever features. Uh, the newest version of Digicam uh, offers two clever features called color code, mm, color labels, and pics. You can use the former to to assign um, color codes to your photos, and you can use pics to quickly sort them. Uh, Digicam also offers powerful filtering cap capabilities. Uh, there is a separate uh, sidebar in Digicam, which allows you to create uh, simple or advanced uh, uh, filtering rules. So you can, for example, show photos that has specific tags uh, and has specific uh, color code. Let me grab some water. Sorry? It if you had examples. Yeah, I plan if we have time, I'll show you a little bit how this works in practice. Uh, you know, with, uh, when you work with, uh, with uh, presentation, there is always, uh, you always need to, to minimize the failure points in your presentations. And these demos, when you actually show something in practice, is always the most dangerous part. So uh, I chickened out and I decided to stick to, to slides. And then if time allows and, in, in, in the, if everything goes well, then I'll show you it in practice. And also, I'll be here the rest of the day. So um, I have my uh, machine with me, not production machine, but uh, I have all the software on it. So if you need uh, concrete examples or, or would like to me to demonstrate you some features, I'm available. So um, back to Digicam. Uh, Digicam also offers non-destructive non uh, editing, meaning that uh, your originals are never uh, altered. Uh, moreover, Digicam allows you to save several versions um, of, of the original, and you can track all, or track all the changes. Uh, when it comes to editing, of course, Digicam offers a wide range of photos, uh, so excuse me, uh, features from uh, standard features like uh, curve and um, level adjustment to some esoteric features like uh, white, black and white conversion. Okay, maybe it's not so esoteric. Uh, the latest version includes uh, panorama stitching capabilities. Uh, what else? Let me see. Ah, exposure blending and lens correction. Uh, finally, uh, thanks to a comprehensive, uh, to, to a wide range of uh, Kipi plugins, so uh, pl plugins, Digicam allows you to export your photos to, to a number of popular uh, photo sharing websites like Flickr, Smugmug, uh, even Facebook, or to uh, self-hosted uh, applications like uh, Gallery or PVGo. Well, let's take a brief look at what a typical photographic workflow may look like. 
Obviously, before you can do anything with your photos, you have to uh, offload it from your camera and export it in the, in the uh, photo management application like uh, Digicam. Next, you have to sort and organize your photos, either by tagging or, or, or putting them into albums or whatever. Uh, once the photos have been organized, you have to process raw files. Uh, most of us uh, share photos with others, be it our friends or family or the entire interweb. Uh, and we usually share our photos either by uploading them to, to popular sharing, uh, photo sharing services like, again, Flickr or SmugMug, or self-hosted uh, applications. And finally, you, have of you need, of course, to take care of, of your photos by backing them up. Import. When it comes to importing photos, you have at least three um, possible ways to do that. You can either, either use tools offered by, by Digicam. You can use uh, dedicated uh, third-party tools like uh, Rapid Photo Downloader, or you can use a custom bash script. Digicam allows you to perform uh, import uh, download and input opera operations in one go. But before you, do, you can do that, you have to create at least one collection in, in uh, Digicam. And collections are basically uh, folders uh, where you store or plan to store your photos. Uh, in my case, I have two, two collections in, uh, in Digicam. One on my production machine, which I used to store photos downloaded from, from the camera. And another one uh, is stored on my server on a local network, uh, where I store selected raw files and uh, process photos. Uh, Digicam does support uh, remote shares, but I personally uh, mount rem remote uh, uh, collection using SSHFS, so it appears as a, a local um, uh, directory. Digicam offers several ways uh, to import photos into the application. Uh, and you can use the commands available in the import uh, menu. You can offload photos directly from the camera connected to your computer. You can import uh, individual images that are already on your machine. Or you can import entire folders uh, containing uh, multiple images. You can also, it is disabled here in my particular setup, but you can also uh, pull photos from Facebook and SmugMug. Alternatively, you can use uh, dedicated applications uh, like uh, Rabbit Photo Downloader. Uh, despite its name, uh, downloading photos is only one of many uh, Rabbit, Downloader, Rabbit Photo Downloader's uh, talents. Um, for starters, you can sim simultaneously download photos from multiple sources. So for example, if your camera has two slots, you can download um, photos from two cards in one go simultaneously. More importantly, you can configure the way Rapid uh, Photo Downloader uh, processes and sorts uh, downloaded photos. For example, you can create a rule that downloads all photos taken on a specific date in a separate folder. Uh, you can also create rules that, renaming rules that rename photos during the download operation. So, for example, this rule, I don't know if you can see that, uh, they rename, it renames photos uh, using uh, date and time uh, uh, data from, from the photos EXIF metadata. metadata. Uh, Rapid Photo Downloader also includes a backup section which allows you to specify a final uh, um, destination for, for, for backing up your photos. So it can back up, for example, it can back up your photos to an external USB uh, disk 
while it downloads it from, from the camera. I personally use a simple bash script to, to download and rename photos. And that is the pinnacle of my uh, programming skills. Uh, it's actually very simple. So it, uh, it grabs the photos from, from the card mounted on, on the desktop. And it uses the excellent uh, EXIF tool, tool utility to, to rename photos and put them into folders. So for example, all the, folder, all the photos uh, I take today, November 5th, 2011, they end up being called 2011 11 05, and then timestamp uh, raw, sorry, NEF. And they all end up in the folder called 2011-11-05. Sort and organize. Well, once you have important photos, you can uh, tag them. And Digicam uh, allows you to assign uh, an unlimited number uh, of, uh, of tags to a photo. Better yet, you can create so-called sub-tags. I'm not sure whether it's uh, an official term for that, but I call them that. Uh, for example, you can create a tag called macro for all your uh, macro shots. And then you can create two sub tags uh, called, for example, Tamron 90 millimeter or Nikon 105 millimeter to tag photos uh, taken with a specific lens. Uh, color labels is another nifty feature uh, that allows you to keep tabs on your photos. Uh, as I mentioned previously, it allows you to, to assign color codes to, to your photos. And how you use this feature depends entirely on your uh, particular workflow. For example, you can use one color, color um, label to label all the photos that you have published on the web and use another uh, color label to, to, to label all the photos uh, you plan to use in your portfolio, for example. Uh, I mentioned earlier a little bit uh, uh, briefly uh, the geotagging capabilities. And the uh, geotagging interface offers several ways of geotagging your photos. Uh, you can use a map, you can use mouse uh, to, to move around the map to find a specific spot on the map, and then drag your photos onto the map to geotag them. Or if you know partial or full ad address of the place where you took your photos, then you can use the search functionality and then just drag and drop your photos onto the search results. Ah, here, geotagging. So, um, and also here you can mm, uh, perform reverse geocoding where you can uh, translate uh, geographical data into human readable format. Processing raw files. Um, also here you can use either uh, the tools offered by Digicam or opt for, for a dedicated application, uh, raw processing application like Darktable. Uh, Digicam built-in raw input tool offers all essential feature for developing uh, digital negatives. And the raw input sidebar uh, is split in three tabs. I think I can even use this uh, fancy, yeah, right here. Raw decoding, post-processing, and info. There are three tabs in uh, raw input uh, to tools interface. And uh, in the raw decoding section, you can tweak uh, demosaicing, white balance, noise reduction, and chromatic aberration correction. Uh, Digicam supports several uh, demosaicing algorithms, and a good thing is that uh, you can preview all the changes before you actually uh, commit them. So uh, the easiest way to, to, to figure out which uh, demosaicing algorithm works best for this particular photo is just to try it. And the raw decoding section lets you tweak other settings too. Uh, here you can choose, for example, uh, 16-bit color depth uh, option, which provides better tonal range than, uh, than the default 8-bit uh, mode. 
In the white balance section, you can adjust white balance setting and specify how the system should handle highlight clippings or overexposed uh, areas uh, in the photo. And finally, you can apply uh, one of, uh, of the supported uh, noise reduction algorithms. Uh, in the process, you can choose several uh, exposure settings such as brightness, contrast, gamma, uh, and exposure in the post-processing uh, section. Although you can do that uh, after you performed uh, conversion, raw conversion, you can do that while you are doing, uh, while you are working in raw input to to, to s streamline your uh, photographic workflow. You can use raw input tool to, to process individual raw files. Uh, but if you need to process several multiple raw files in one go, then Digicom includes a uh, raw batch processor, which allows you to specify several settings and just run it on, uh, on a batch of photos. Duck table. While Digicom makes a good, uh, a solid uh, tool for processing uh, raw files. Using a dedicated uh, raw application like Ducktable makes a lot of sense. Um, despite the fact that what I feel is that Digicom is designed for, for serious uh, photographers and professionals alike, it spots a very simple interface that puts all your all uh, the functionality uh, at your fingertips. And Ducktable uh, relies on the raw speed uh, decoding library, which also supports a wide range of cameras and, and raw formats. In addition to that, uh, Ducktable comes uh, with uh, custom enhanced color matrices. And I have to read that because uh, I'm not pretty sure what it is. But from what I see, it provides a very good color rendition of raw files. For example, if I open raw file in Digicam, I can see that it's somehow is off. It doesn't look very natural, and I have to do a lot of post-processing to, 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 to make the picture the way uh, I, want to, I want it to look like. Uh, in Digicam, Digicam usually does an excellent job of, of creating a natural looking, all by sometimes a little bit uh, oversaturated results. So Digicam requires less work uh, for processing uh, uh, raw files. Um, similar to Digicam, uh, Darktable uses non-destructive uh, editing, but it does it in a slightly different manner. All uh, editing actions in uh, Darktable are stored in a separate XMP file. So your raw, uh, original raw file is never altered or, uh, in, in any way. Well, it would be impossible to, to cover all uh, Ducktable's features as much as I want to. Uh, so uh, I'll give you a few highlights. Um, all editing operations in Ducktable uh, are displayed as a list in the history palette. And you can revert any action, any performed action uh, to a previous state by simply selecting the action you want in this list. The clever trick is that you can turn the history, uh, the history of a list of actions into a, a preset. So you can run the same uh, steps on any photo you like. And the right sidebar, right here, and uh, the right sidebar in Ducktable editing's interface uh, acts as a toolbox that holds uh, palettes. And palettes in, in uh, Ducktable are treated as plugins. Mm, Ducktable comes with uh, a few uh, plugins enabled by, by default, but you can enable whatever available in the more plugins palette. And this way, you can customize your, your workspace uh, to fit your specific photographic needs. And to make it easier for, for you to keep tabs on, on uh, old uh, Darktable's tools, 
they're all organized in four uh, sections right here. Basic, color, correct, and effects. And each plugin in, in Darktable allows you to tweak uh, certain parameters. For example, the Sharpen, uh, Sharpen plugin allows you to tweak radius, amount, and threshold. And if you are not happy with the result, you can always undo all the changes uh, with a single mouse click and basically return to the, to the original. Also here you can create presets that contains uh, the specified values so you can later apply them to, to, to any photo you like. Once the raw files have been processed, you can e export them. And Ducktable lets you configure export settings, including destination, file format, size, and color profile. Um, the application supports a wide range of formats, output formats, including 8-bit JPEG, 8 and 16-bit PNG, uh, 8 and 16-bit TIFF. And in the target storage palette, you can specify destination right here. Here, you can specify the dis uh, generated uh, destination path uh, to, to, to the exported files, and you can use a number of uh, variables like um, file name, picture folder, hour, day, and month uh, to generate the path. Besides, besides the ability to export photos to hard disk, uh, Darktable uh, also allows you to export photos directly to Flickr uh, and Picasso Web as well as send them via email. Well, of course, Darktable is not the only uh, raw processing tool, not the only open source uh, processing uh, tool. And there are a number of alternatives available, uh, including Raw Studio. Uh, I use Raw Studio occasionally, uh, especially when I switch to a new version of, uh, of Ubuntu when uh, Darktable is not available in the repositories, and then I use uh, Raw Studio. And uh, I have a very special feeling about uh, Raw Studio because um, it is developed by three guys uh, from Denmark. And even though we, we live like uh, two hours by train from each other, I've never met them. Uh, raw therapy, I think it's one of the oldest and mature uh, raw processes uh, on the market, and they have recently uh, has been recently uh, open sourced. UFRAW is available as a standalone uh, raw processor and as a plugin to, uh, to the GIMP. So if you use the GIMP for post processing uh, and retouching your photos, then maybe uh, this uh, solution fits better your workflow. And finally, for TU, I don't have much to say about for TU because I only recently discovered this application. And it looks like a little bit lightweight, but it's available on uh, both Linux and uh, Windows. So uh, if you're considering uh, implementing open source uh, uh, photographic workflow, but using Windows, then maybe it's, uh, it's a good alternative. Now to the publishing parts uh, of the photographic workflow. Uh, Digicom allows you not only uh, to organize and um, edit your photos, uh, but also share and publish them. Uh, thanks to Bundle Keepy plugins, uh, the application supports a wide range of uh, sharing options, from creating HTML, static HTML li uh, um, galleries to generating KML files so you can view your photos on uh, uh, Google Earth. You can also upload, and I've mentioned it before, you can also upload your photos to, to popular uh, photo sharing services as well as uh, self-hosted galleries uh, based on gallery in PVGo. And speaking of PVGo, if you plan to, to host your own photos on your own server, then PVGo should be at the top of your uh, list. Uh, this application has all the features you need uh, you can use a building uploading tool to, to uh, publish your photos. You can tag them, you can organize them into albums and sub-albums. Uh, PVGo supports uh, multi-user environments, so you can uh, 
I had as many users as would, you would like and, uh, and uh, uh, arrange them into groups and uh, give them specific rights to view certain photos, for example. And uh, similar to many uh, photographic or uh, many open source uh, software, PVGo does support plugins, and there are a, lot, a wide range of plugins available uh, on the PVGo's website. So you can extend its default functionality by installing new modules. Uh, finally, a few words about backup. So if you want to keep your photo, I don't have to say, to say this to you, but if you want to keep your photos safe, then you, have, you need to, to have at least two copies of your backup, uh, local and remote. So in case you store your photos on, um, on your production machine, then you can use um, a, a simple solution, which includes a, a, an external USB hard drive. Uh, and there are a lot of, uh, and there is a plethora of uh, open source backup tools, including good old um, R-Sync. So you can using it, you can create a simple or advanced uh, backup script, uh, scripts that uh, backup your your photos on uh, on the USB uh, hard disk, or as in in my case on uh, on a local uh, server, a server on a local uh, network. You also have to uh, to have a remote uh, copy of your backup, and. Uh, Again, there are a lot of options out there. You can use uh, Amazon S3, and uh, or you can use any service that supports uh, R-Sync to, to back up your photos in, in the cloud. And this is what my uh, backup setup looks like. Uh, here in the middle, there is a, huh, nice to know. Uh, in the middle, there is my server. I use, uh, a uh, very nifty little server from uh, from Swedish company called Excite, Exito, actually, uh, called B3. Um, uh, disclaimer, I do occasionally uh, some work for them, so uh, I may be bi biased. And um, the company is uh, sponsoring uh, TDOs. So um, I have a few flyers with me. So if you are interested in knowing more <laughs> about it, you can just ask me. And uh, it's uh, basically it's a Debian-based uh, uh, personal server um, where I store all my photos. Uh, and uh, as I mentioned previously, I use SSHFS to mount uh, the file system on my laptop so I can open and edit them in uh, Digicam and uh, Darktable. And uh, there is a little hard disk, USB hard disk connected to, to uh, the server and uh, uh, Chrome job uh, runs uh, a backup script that backs up everything on the USB hard disk and in the cloud using the rsync.net service. Uh, do you know rsync.net? Have you used it? It's, it's basically it's a backup service that supports rsync via SSH. So it's easy to create uh, it, it works, it plays well with, uh, with uh, R-Sync. So it's extremely easy to create. It's very, very simple uh, bash script uh, that backs, backs up everything in the cloud. It's not free, uh, but if you are a software developer, uh, open source software developer, or somehow involved in, in open source project, uh, you can just mention that and they'll give you 50%, I think. I'm not affiliated with them, but I have I had very good experiences with uh, with their service. They seems to be very seem to be very professional, and uh, I have something like 50 gigabyte for for around 16 dollars a month. So it's not cheap, but uh, it's not expensive either. So um, the only thing uh, is left to say is to thank you for your attention and uh, that you attended the talk. And uh, a shameless plug-in, uh, this is my hobby. And I blog about open source uh, uh, photography software on my blog uh, called scribbleandsnaps.wordpress.com. Uh, and you can always get in touch with me 
by dropping an email at uh, dmpop at linux.com. And you can catch me later here uh, on the venue if you would like to talk to me. Thank you.